Saying they're still on the way. Oh, they ought to have been here by now. Yes. Come, sir. Oh, thank you. Ah, thank, thank you for bringing him, Pastor. We thank thank you very much. Thank you very much. Oh, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, we appreciate your kindness and your love for honoring this invitation. Uh, this is Elder Roberts and Dickiness Roberts, his wife. This is their home. They are faithful members of our church. I see. Like I told you on the way, the girl is their daughter. Hmm. Oh, Reverend, sir. Please, for three days, you have conducted powerful crusades in our church, and people were blessed. And tomorrow morning, you are going back to your base. That's right. That's okay, right. Please, do this for us, for God's sake. We believe if you pray for our daughter, we too will experience miracle under our roof, just as it had happened in the church. Yes, oh, please. God. Lord, wipe away my tears, please. Lord. Uh, Elder Robert, you were at the venue of the first and second evening of the crusade. Yeah. Well, the pastor told me you couldn't turn off for the program this evening, sir. We couldn't make it, Reverend. I see. You see, our situation suddenly grew worse since we brought her back home from the hospital. It was more terrible today, so we were afraid to leave her alone in the house to come to the crusade. However, we still believe and still trust in God. Please. Come and pray for her. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Pastor, sir, I 
thought you said she's a girl. Yes, sir. She's a young lady. But a voice. Yes, Reverend. That is what we noticed too. Uh, we noticed she suddenly began to carry a strange voice uh, and I become more violent. Yes, sir. Let's go. some questions. the robot. How did it all start? You see, I need some information before going into prayers. This is a serious case. Reverend, she was rushed home from campus about three weeks ago. But it wasn't as bad as this. We took her to a hospital from where she was transferred to a private specialist hospital. But when it was getting worse daily, despite all the drugs, we began to sense it was more of spiritual than physical. So we brought her home last week when we realized the doctor couldn't help. We decided to go to spiritual alternative. Since then, we've prayed, we fasted even twice. The pastor had brought the prayer squad to have prayer vigils. <laughs> oh, vigils. <laughs> so all this started on the campus. <sighs> yes, Reverend. She got, just got admission to the university. This is her first year, the second semester in the year. She had complained once or twice before that a group of students on the campus were disturbing her. Disturbing her? How? We don't know. We don't know. <laughs> we don't know, Reverend. This man of God here to come and pray for you. Get this man out of my sight. You foul and the spirit. Shut up your mouth in the name of Jesus Christ. You evil spirit in Deborah, I command you now in the name of Don't Try it. Don't even think of it. What do you mean? I mean what I said. And you know what I mean. If you try it, you will ridicule yourself. <laughs> Ha <laughs> 
<laughs> Say something. We have to cast out this foul spirit out of her. He dare not do it. I know what I'm saying and he knows it too. <laughs> This spirit is trying to override us. We need to do something. We need to cast out this filthy spirit. Shut up your mouth, you feel the spirit. I command you in the name of Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think you have some sort of great feature because you go about preaching the gospel? So, you think you can dabble into areas you have no power over? But the Lord has given believers powers over demons and the power of darkness. He is a servant of the Most High God. Pastor, what do you know? I know the word of God. It is true and it is settled in heaven. Yeah, but you don't know this man. Who does he think he is? Who are you? He has a beautiful and faithful wife. Yes, he rides on Sumi more than three times. They have done it right in his office. On two occasions, he had taken her along with him on ministration's trip. And they have been lodged together in her hotel room. They still have some secret places where the meat. <laughs> Yet, he preaches. Souls get saved. Miracles occur. Doesn't he know that the Lord is doing all those to honor himself? Ask him what he knows about to me. You feel the spirit. You are a liar. And Satan is the father of life. <laughs> you are saying all this to confuse us. You are saying all this to distract us. And to so destroy us and miss us. So as to avert the judgment upon you. Pastor, brother, don't mind this lying spirit. I do not know what he's saying. I know nobody called to me. Liar! How holy man of God! You still lie, my friend! You evil spirit! In the name of Jesus, I command you to stop in Jesus' name! Stop in Jesus' name! not my daughter. That could not have been my daughter. Yes, I now agree. Another spirit is working now. No. 
<laughs> that is not Deborah. That is not Deborah. That is not. Thank you, Pastor. Sorry, sir. Thank you. Sorry, sir. No. Sorry, sir. Something must have gone wrong somewhere. But God has not revealed it to me yet. This is what, sir? Uh, but, sir, uh, who is to, to me? Uh, do you know anything about her, sir? Hmm. Pastor, do you believe the words of a demon? I mean, can a demon ever be trusted? Not really, sir. Not really. Uh, but uh, it's just coming to my mind, and uh, I'm just wondering that at times in the Bible, Demons knew what uh, other people did not know. <laughs> How do you mean? The chief priest and the Pharisees and the worshippers in the synagogue could not discern or recognize the Lordship of Jesus. But demons were able to recognize and acknowledge his lordship. Pastor, mm -hmm. you need to take me back to my hotel room. I'll need to rest after the ethic crusade. And besides, I want to catch the first flight back to Lagos tomorrow. Yes, sir. You cannot hide this from God. You may cover your sins and say nobody knows. You cannot hide this from God. The crusade was a success. The deliverance section that would have crowned it up was a mess up. To me, to me. Sir, how was your cool seat in Kaduna, sir? Huh? Uh, you are welcome back, sir. Thank you. Uh, how was the cool seat? It was splendid. It was a huge success. In fact, Many souls came forward to give their lives each night. We, we knew it and we prayed for you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. You cannot hide it from God. You cannot hide it from God. You may cover your sins and say nobody knows. You cannot hide it from God. Splendid. Thank it was God. splendid. It was a good program. Thank God. What's happened to your face? Oh, this. It's a little bit swollen. Actually, I noticed it this morning. Eh? Uh, I guess it was a sign of stress. I just felt tired ever since yesterday's program. Ah, sorry. Thank you very much. To me, called this morning. And what did she say? 
She kept on calling to know if you are back or not. She has called three times this morning. She said you have an important message which she couldn't discuss with me. Which message is that? She never told me anything. I'm always disturbed at her strange behavior. I've been telling you, honey, my spirit doesn't go well with this girl. All right. I've had you. We will do something about it. It's all right. Honey. Yes. What has gone wrong? Nothing. But, but you, you, you look so disturbed. I told you I'm exhausted. Huh? I mean, the three-day crusade and the long trip. Who is it? To me. Look here to me. This is the fourth time you will call this money. What is it? What is it that you can't tell me? He has a message in the office. Annie, let me talk with her. Hello to me. Hello to me. What is wrong with you? You know I travel out for a program. You have my itinerary with you. And you know I should be back today. So why all these phone calls since morning to my house asking if I'm back or not? Right from hell in the morning. A special message in the office? Who brought the message? Then let the message and the parcel wait until I come later in the office. Don't mind her. I will get to know the message later in the day. That lady must go. She will. When? Don't worry. I said she will. Something is wrong somewhere. You cannot hide it from God You cannot hide it from God You may cover your sins And say nobody knows You cannot hide it from God You cannot hide it from God you cannot hide it from God you may cover your sins oh, oh, good morning. Oh, oh fine 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 ah to me you call this morning that I have a message well actually sir it was a special invitation to minister which someone brought to my house early this morning is that so? Yes, sir. I only wanted to inform you about it. Yes, come in. wrong with you for God's sake? What has gone into your head? Someone brought an invitation to your house this morning. Was that why you kept ringing my house this morning? I mean, to me, why are you acting like a child? For God's sake, why? Why? Look, your, your, your behavior is beginning to send some sickness to my wife. I mean, can't you understand for God's sake? Why can't you understand? Anyway, 
Where is the invitation? What's this? This doesn't look like an invitation. <laughs> really? What's this? Alpha Romeo Laboratory. This does not look like an invitation. It's the results of a pregnancy test. <sighs> ha! I'm surprised. Pregnancy test? Who's pregnancy? My sir. Are you surprised? What do you expect? You, you can't be serious. You, you, you can't be serious to me. I'm serious, sir. I got the result this morning. That was why I was calling to check if you're back from your trip. Oh, my God. How about to me? But how manage, for God's sake? How manage? How did you? Oh, yes, come in. Ah, Brother Solomon. Yes, sir. Uh, they have come, sir. Who? The director of programs of uh, Pyramid Television. They are here for the interview, slated for 12.30 p.m. I have completely forgotten about the interview. And also, sir, the Secretary General of the Pentecostal Association of Ministers. He too has come. He said he has come to deliver an important message. Reverend. Yes, sir. Let me see the Reverend first. Uh, the television people can come in later. All right, sir. All right, sir. We still need to talk more, Reverend. I know, I know. I know we need to talk. But as you can see, you have to excuse us. Uh, let me attend to these visitors first. Uh, yes, come in. Ah, Reverend, Reverend, Reverend Lucia. Lucia. It's good to see you. You are welcome. It's, it's good to see you. It's you. getting it's difficult to see you these days. You travel a lot. You are right. I've not been around for some time. You see, I was away to Kaduna. Yes, I was told. Um, this is Apostle Ken Mbasi from Believers Tabernacle, Harare, Zimbabwe. I see. And he is also the president of the Zimbabwe Council of Evangelical Ministers. Oh, you are welcome, sir. Please do it. It's good to see you, sir. You are welcome. Yeah. Uh, to me, you can go and type that letter. <laughs> you can go. Uh, that letter. Yes, sir. You can go. Um, let me have the letter, sir. I will need the address on the letter. Oh, you are right. Uh, where did I keep it now? Uh, maybe you can come back later. The letter is in your breast pocket, sir. Ha, huh, you are right. You are right. You are right. Uh, you can go and type it. You can go. Uh, gentlemen, I'm very, very sorry for the uh, interruption. Uh, yes, um, he arrived from uh, Zimbabwe yesterday. I see. He's uh, looking for you. He said he needs to see you. <laughs> yes, Reverend. Uh, we thank God for your life and your wonderful ministry. We thank God. The news and the testimony has, have gotten to us in far away Zimbabwe. Um, last year at the fire conference in Nairobi, I was there where you preached on the second night. In fact, I saw what happened that night. <laughs> uh, we thank God for everything. We thank God for everything. So we so much desire that you come for our Believers conven Convention in Harare this June. That's uh, three months time. I see. Yes, um, it is organized by all churches, all evangelical churches in Harare. And uh, you have been voted to be one of the uh, main speakers for the convention. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> that's wonderful. Yeah. It comes up on June 7 to 11. Yes, we will make all necessary arrangements for all your team. I see. It's all right. It's all right by me. <laughs> it's all right by me. Thank you. Yeah. That's nice. So once again, gentlemen, you're welcome. Yes. 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 <laughs> Thanks. Yes.
Honey, your look is giving me concern. Is anything the matter? Nothing. Did you get the message to me wanted to give you yesterday? Yes. Don't mind her. Thank you. What about it? It's an invitation. Arari Believers Convention in Zimbabwe. Uh, the man brought the letter to me in the office later in the day. Uh, Reverend Odia was the one that brought him to see me. This lady must be funny then. Why was she ringing this place continuously in the morning? I wonder. Her spirit is not right. I think so. You must find a way of settling the dispute between her and her husband. She must return to her husband in Calabar. But she, she said the husband has refused to take her back. They have been separated for almost a year now. And their only son is living with her mother. She must go back to her husband. Saying. I can't even grasp what she's saying. She says she has some problems she would like to discuss with you. I see. Now let me talk with her. Hello to me. Hello? What is the problem? You know what the problem is, Reverend. You told me we would discuss this issue before you left the office this afternoon. But you left without discussing the matter with me. Look, it's all right to me. You see, it's high time you, 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 you get yourself back to your husband. You need to reconcile with your family. You need to live with your, your husband and your son. It's important. What am I saying? And what are you saying, Reverend? Do you really understand what I showed you this afternoon? I'm pregnant. I'm pregnant for you. It's all right. It's all right. Just, just be calm, okay? Be calm. We, we talk about it when I come to the office later. Uh, maybe tomorrow. Just be calm, okay? I hope you understand the implication of all this. We we'll talk about it later when I come to the office tomorrow, eh? Just be calm. It's all right. Good night. What is she saying? She's crying. I think she's fed up. She's becoming lonely. I will try and see her myself in the office tomorrow. No, 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 no. Don't, don't bother. Leave this to me. I will settle the matter. Just leave it to me, okay?
I don't to myself. She must have put off the phone. Oh my God, but could it be true that she's pregnant? Hello to me. Yes, sir. To me, it's me. Yes, I know. Reverend, thanks for all the insults you heaped on me yesterday evening. I was trying to tell you we need to discuss this matter. You were telling me I need to go back to my husband and settle with him. Are you really aware of what has happened to me? Are you really aware of the implications? Uh, to me, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You see, I'm sorry for everything that I said to you. I'm sorry. It's just that my, my wife was around. My wife was around and I had to say that to, to cover her. We'll talk about it later in the office. No. I'm not coming to the office this morning, sir. I'm a bit weak. We need to talk. The pregnancy is two months old. Ah. Two months old. It's all right. It's all right. I, I will come to your place later in the day. All right. I'll be waiting. You were weak yesterday, eh? Won't you have some rest after days of programs? Honey, I still had some discussions to make with the Reverend from Zimbabwe. We fixed an appointment for this morning. I know I need some rest, and I'll be home early today to do that. Okay. Thank you. See you.
supported me yesterday evening, Reverend. To me, I've apologized to you on the phone this morning. I said I was sorry. Look, let's, let, let's discuss the issue at hand. <sighs> to me, is it really true? That's what? The pregnancy. Yes, of course. Will I be lying with the medical report? Oh, my God. <laughs> Jesus. I can't believe this. Excuse me, sir. You can't believe what? You can't believe that you are responsible for it or what? <laughs> to me, just, just calm down. It's okay. Calm down. Okay. Okay. I think we need to settle something first. Now, wh what, what is it? Okay. Do you agree you are responsible for it or not? I think that should be the starting point. To understand okay. what is written on that paper. You can't understand our meeting together in your office on three occasions. You can't understand those times that you traveled to Abuja, Bini, and Ilori. And you told me to come and meet you in your hotel rooms. And recently, there were about two or three times we met together, one of which resulted in this. So, sir, what exactly is it that you can't understand? What is it that you can't understand? Uh, uh, to me, I'm sorry for everything. I'm sorry. What can we do? Well, I don't know. I've been waiting for your suggestion. Oh my God. To me. When last did you see your husband? Who? My husband? I'm just asking. Don't even think of it, Reverend. You know it yourself. I've not been with my husband for like a year now. We've separated. So, he is not responsible for it. I know, to me. I know he is not. I know. You see, I, I'm just trying to work something out. Like what? You are thinking I could go to him and probably sleep with him and tell him later that I'm pregnant. Is that your thinking, Reverend? And do you think that is logical? Hmm. The man still doesn't want to see me. Besides, this thing is two months old now. Won't a reasonable man calculate the month? Reverend, come up with a logical solution. Say something else. To me, can you abort the pregnancy? Yes, I was getting ready for such a response. I knew you would say that, but I've never done it before. It's risky. To me. What are you suggesting then? I'll keep it. Keep what? Don't you think terminating a two months pregnancy is risky? It will amount to endangering my life. I can't do it. To me? You can't keep it. You can't. We have to do something about it. To me? How can you, a married woman, be pregnant for someone like me? Huh? What would the people say? What would the church members say? My wife, your husband to me, the, the, the church members, 
is not possible. Then, what else do you think we can do about it? <sighs> Please to me. Please. We are left with no other choice than to do this. You just have to do it. I won't do it. To me? Yes, come in. Oh. One Mr. Clement who we call from Calabar. He was asking out sister to me. I see. Clement who we say from Calabar. Yes. We told him that she was not yet around and we gave him a phone number. Uh, I just called her to know why she's not yet in the office by now. She told me she has informed you that she's not feeling well this morning. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, actually, she called me this morning to tell me that she has malaria. Mm, that's all right, that's all right. You can go. Clement Owese from Calabar. That must be a husband. Just call the office now. Actually, Clara gave him your number. What for? What did he say? Now, now, listen, listen to me, listen. Listen to me very well. Back to our former discussion. To me, we are left with no other choice. I got in myself into <sighs> Clement. Perhaps he wants to call me back. Oh my God. Uh, yes to me. I uh, speak on. I will do it. Good. Good. Uh, that's good. Uh, but where? Leave that to me. I will need some money. Uh, like how much? 100,000. What? I mean, what will you do with that kind of an amount? You told me to do it. And I'm going to do it. Give me the money. Uh, it's all right. That's good. Uh, I will bring the check to your... House this evening. That will be too late. I need the money this afternoon. I'm setting out on it this evening. And I won't be home till next week. I see. Uh, meet me at the bank in 30 minutes time. Actually, it was my fault, sir. 
I never knew what came over me that evening. I brought into the house this strange lady and demanded that my wife serve her dinner. When she refused, I ordered the lady to go into the kitchen and serve both of us. Then my wife pushed her out, hitting her head against the wall. I sent her out of the house while the other lady slept in the house that night, taking over immediately. While my wife and my only son out to sleep in a friend's house that night, she came back the next day to beg me, even bringing friends to plead for her. But I was adamant. I never knew what came over me that evening. Where is she now? Lagos. She went to Lagos two months later, after staying with a friend for about a month. What about your son? I learned the poor boy was trapped with his grandma in Lagos, while she went to get a secretarial job in a church office. And the lady who took over now, I mean, what about her? When I was invited to your church that evening, and you preached on the enemy within. And at the end, I came out to give my life to Jesus. The veil was removed from my eyes. Then I realized the pain and the anguish that my recklessness had caused my wife and my only son. I wept when I realized the evil that the devil had done to myself and to my family. When I got back home, I sent her packing. She left that evening. She bewitched me. Hmm. So, you have given Jesus Christ a chance in your life now? Yes, ma'am. Oh. I've surrendered my life to him. I've given him my all. Ah, I terribly regret my actions. I'm sorry. <clears throat> what are you going to do now about your wife? Does she still love you? Have you located her? I got in touch with the office where she works. I got her phone number. I called, but the phone was switched off. Later today, I got across to the office again, but I was told she did not come to the office. That she's down with malaria. <laughs> you see what I've caused? <laughs> see my life? <laughs> Stop crying, Bra Clement. The battle is won already. Stop crying. The battle is won. I'll still try to get in touch with her, to locate her. <laughs> so that together we can go to pick my son. I want to come back home with both of them. I want to come back home with them. You didn't take your dinner yesterday. And you didn't eat anything this afternoon. You've just been taking juice. And since you arrived from Kaduna, you have not been lively. Honey, it's just that I don't feel like eating for now. Mm. That's all. There's no problem. Daniela, you're not eating. I 
I've been noticing her since she came back from school this afternoon. She has been looking so dull. Daniela. Dad. What's the matter? She says she has been having bad dreams. Hmm. What dreams? Come on, dear, tell me. It's all right, it's all right. Excuse me, eh? Honey, excuse me. <laughs> Yes, to me. How is it now? Where are you now? I'm in a private clinic in Ibadu. I should be in Lagos tomorrow. I won't be at my house. I'll be somewhere resting. It is all right. It's all right. And... Are you single or married? Married. Why do you want to do it? I don't want it. And uh, you said it is two months? Yes, sir. That means you will need a serious medication after the evacuation. And a long rest. It is very important. Okay. Have you paid to the cashier? Twenty-five thousand. Yes. Let us go then. May I know you, sir? Are you sure you don't know me? I am not sure I do. Well, it's possible now that you've been blindfolded by your secret sins. What do you mean? You see, it's a divine principle, established and settled. Every unconfessed sin multiplies itself and breeds more sins. May I produce an example? First, David lusted after Bathsheba. He did not confess it. He committed adultery with her. He did nothing about it. The adultery resulted in an unplanned pregnancy. He tried to cover it up by sending for Uriah to come back home and sleep with his wife. Next, the unconversed sin led to more evil when he plotted the death of Uriah. Can you now understand the principle? In an attempt to cover up a sin, another sin is usually committed. So your best option is never to try to cover up your sin, but confess it and face the consequences. So, see you next time. Who was that? In an attempt to cover up one scene, another scene is usually committed. Jesus, what have I gotten myself into? Oh my God, oh my God. <sighs>
This journey has a terrible ending. I was enjoying the fever, the mercy, and the goodness of God in my life, in my home, and in my ministry, until I walked into this swamp. Oh my God, this is my 25th year in the ministry, which has blessed hundreds of thousands of people. Oh God, were you not better if you have called me home before finding myself in this terrible Scandal. Oh my God. The whole story changed on the arrival of that young woman into our ministry about ten months ago. I wasn't careful enough. Yes. So your best option is not to try to cover up your sin, but to confess it and face the consequences. Confessions? How do I do that? What do I do? God, where do I start from? Huh? What about my home, my children, my wife, my ministry? My God. My reputation and positions in the evangelical circle. Honey. Oh, honey. You are woken up so early. I just woke up now and I discovered you are not on bed. Oh, yes. You've not been sleeping, isn't it? Mm, I just woke up to pray and uh, meditate. Don't worry, I will soon be back. I will join you in some few minutes. Okay. It's all right. All right.
Hello to me. Yes. What happened? Just want to let you know I'm back and it's done. Oh, that's good. W where are you now? Are you in the house? No, in a friend's house. I'll be here till I'm better. Don't look for me. You can't find me. My husband got me on phone a few minutes ago. He begged for my forgiveness. He said he would locate the office and come. I don't know why I got myself into all this. that God will forgive us all and that he should eat me first and bring me back home to my son and my husband. We know this is over. I will see no more. Yes, come in, come in. Sir, a man has come now. He said his sister to me's husband. And sister to me is not in the office this morning again. Ha! Ah, to me's husband? Yes, sir. Bring him in. All right, sir. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Please have your seat. Thank have you. Seat. I learned you are looking for to me. Yes, sir. I'm Clement Owese, husband of Mrs. Tumi Owese. Mm. Actually, I live in Calabar, but she stays in Lagos with my son. Mm. Uh, Sister Tumi has told us about you. Mm. Sir. Uh, but how, how come you abandoned her for so long? First of all, sir, I'd like to appreciate you for your love and concern for her. I learned your ministry provided her with a job when she came to Lagos, with which she has been able to cater for our son who stays with his grandma. Uh, we thank God for everything. We thank God for everything. And, uh, gentlemen, I also learned that you only had a slight disagreement and then you sent her packing. Is that true? But I later realized that I was bewitched by a strange lady that I brought into my life. Mm. I regret all my actions, sir. But thank God, I've given my life to Jesus and he has removed the veil from off my eyes. I'm determined to make up for all the sufferings and anguish that my recklessness has caused my wife and my son. I arrived from Calabar this morning by first flight to Lagos. So I wish to return back home with both my wife and my son. It's all right. We thank God for your restoration. Sir, so how can I see her? Uh, can I get anyone who knows the description to her place or can take me there? Uh, yes. I heard she has not been to the office for three days now. She phoned me yesterday to inform me that she has uh, malaria and that she needs to take some time to rest. Can I get anyone who knows the description to her, please? Uh, that's no problem. Uh, let me see. Where are Solomon? Please come over. Yes, sir. Yes, uh, is there anyone that knows where Tumi lives? Uh, Sister Mary knows her house, sir. Please call her for me. All right, sir. That's good. And, uh, my brother, I'm so happy. How have you been enjoying your new life and experience in the Lord Jesus Christ? God has been faithful to me, sir. Oh, that's good. That's I good. worship with the Way of Pentecost Evangelism Mission, Calabar. Mm, I see. And uh, where do you work? 
I'm a naval officer, sir. I see. Ah, Sister Mary, I learned you know where to me lives. Yes, sir. But I've been trying a number to inquire about her health, but it's not been going through. I see. Uh, perhaps she's uh, trying to take some time to rest and uh, might have put off all the phone calls so that she will not be disturbed. Mm. At any rate, uh, please take her husband to her. All right, sir. Thank you very much, Oh, it's sir. nice meeting you. You are welcome, sir. Thank you, sir. You are welcome. Not on the altar, you can't hide from God, cause the seas are clean. Not on the altar, not on the altar, you can't be God. Hello, I'm back. You called me that you would like to stay with me till Sunday. How are you feeling? I'm not feeling fine. I'm not feeling fine here today. Huh. What happened? How are you really feeling? Uh, 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 oh, sorry. What am I cutting myself into? My tummy. Tommy, oh, Tommy, what is this? To me, you are bleeding. You are bleeding to me. What have you done to yourself? To me, oh, call my office. Uh, office, oh, office, oh, call oh, my office. Oh, my office. Oh, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, what is the number? Oh my God. Oh, God. Oh, God. this? Reverend Ozzy on the line. Ha! Mr. Clement. Uh, Mary told me that you could not find her at home and that the door was locked. Yes, sir. But I was able to secure the number of a friend. I called and she promised to help me contact another friend. I'm still hopeful, sir. I'm putting up in our hotel till tomorrow. I see. Uh, it's all right, it's all right. Uh, just make sure that you call upon me uh, anytime you are able to. Uh. Okay. All right. Bye. All right, sir. Bye. Honey, there's a lady in the living room. She claims to be to Miss Friend. She seems to be in a hurry. She said to me, he's very sick in the hospital now. To me in the hospital? So she said. Oh, 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 what happened to her? We need to go and see the lady. Let's go and see the lady. To me, is seriously sick in the hospital. She managed to give me the description to this place. But what exactly has happened to her? She just started bleeding. Hey. And she has lost much blood hey. by the time we got her to the hospital. To me, bleeding? But what, what, what could have caused it? <laughs> did, did, did she tell you what caused it? No, sir. She said nothing. She couldn't speak much. If I, we need to be there first. Ah, to me? Oh we have to go. What type of sickness is this? I don't know. What type of sickness is this? For Please, let's go, Dad. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Please forgive me. I've been searching for you all over the place since morning. 
till someone led me here. Honey, I've come back for you, honey. I've come to take you and Williams back home with me to Calabar. Please forgive me for all I've done. I believe the Lord will heal you first, then we can go home together. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Clement. Forgive me. Hush. To me, I'm the one who needs to be forgiven. The one who has broken your heart. Just get well for me, honey. Just get well for me. So I'll take you back home with me. <laughs> oh, doctor, what's wrong with her? Are you just coming? I just came in now, sir. A lady brought her here and just dashed out. Her case is very critical. Excuse me. <laughs> What's happening, Doctor? Tell me, what's wrong? Sorry, mister. We lost her. No, doctor! It can't be! To me! To me! To the right! So much blood before getting to this place. I understand she was a married woman. Yes, doctor. Then I need to ask her husband some questions. I'm a husband, doctor. Really? You should have used some preventive measures if you knew you didn't want a baby. Why did you allow her go into abortion? She committed an abortion? Oh, madam. The evacuation was badly done. Oh, God. And she lost so much blood before getting to this place. Ah! She committed abortion? No! This woman was separated from her husband for almost a year. So how come this abortion? I just came in today to reconcile with her. And take her back home with me. Ah! Oh, ah! Oh. But did she tell you who was responsible for this pregnancy? Ah! No, ma. I never knew such a thing happened. She just arrived today from me, by the. Oh, and I just noticed that she was bleeding. That was all I know. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Good morning, sir. 
You are all aware of what happened to Tumi. We lost her. It's rather very unfortunate. The doctor said she committed an abortion. And uh, incidentally, her husband, whom she had been separated for, for the past one year, has just come back to reconcile with her, only to meet with this unfortunate incident. Rather very unfortunate. However, as a member of this ministry, and as one of the workers, we hold it a responsibility to take absolute responsibility for our burial after contacting our people. Okay. It's rather unfortunate that this has to happen to us. God bless you all. You can go. Remember me? Now, let's continue our story. The story of David I was telling you the other time. Can you still remember? After David killed Uriah, he thought his rotten secrets were concealed until Prophet Nathan showed up. But who are you? <laughs> Me? No, no. Let's talk about you. You have killed. You have spoiled. And now you thought the war has ended. But that is far from the truth. You are anointed a minister of God to preach, to heal, and to deliver. The heavens were opened over your ministry. You are enjoying the favor of God. The Lord is increasing your ministry. I'm blessing you, blessing the works of your hand, wherever you go. He has even made covenant with you to do more. Why then have you decided to despise the command, despise the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? You have gone in unto another man's wife. You've plotted the death of an innocent child. And you have murdered the wife of your fellow brother with the sword of abortion. You have soiled the altar of the Lord with the blood of sin. Henceforth, prepare for the consequences. In many places, the altar of the Lord has been desecrated with innocent blood by many ministers of the gospel like you. But the time has come that the Lord shall begin to fight for his name. 